Time next for a perspective, and today is World Refugee Day, a day dedicated to shining the spotlight on the issues faced by refugees around the world. One initiative hoping to break stereotypes is the Refugee Food Festival. It's taken place for three years in a row. The event, which started in Paris and got restaurants to open their kitchens to refugee chefs, has now expanded beyond France and even Europe. To talk more about this, we can speak to Louis Martin, co-founder of the Refugee Food Festival, as well as Haisham Karachai, uh, uh, chef from Syria. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Louis, I want to start with you first. What was it about food that, you know, got you thinking this could break down stereotypes on what people think of refugees? Yes, we had the idea of um, leveraging food to break the stereotypes uh, against refugees because food is one of the very few things which is at the same time really universal, that has the power to gather everyone, but it's also very something really intimate which brings us back to our uh, history to who we are, to our identity, and tells a lot to others uh, what's our culture. So uh, we had this idea to displace the conversation, to take the counter narrative of all the negative messages that are conveyed around refugees, to showcase talents, culinary talents of refugee chefs by creating collaborations between restaurants and refugee cooks and uh, with some success, I guess, and that, that's how we came up with the idea of the festival. Now, Haisham, you've been in France for how long, long now? I've been in France uh, since 2015. So since, okay, yeah, so four years. four years. And when people hear that you're, you know, from Syria, what are their initial reactions when they hear you're a Syrian chef? Uh, they are interested on one hand because like a chef, you know, like uh, they want to know how, uh, what wa it was like my, uh, uh, how you progress. got involved into exactly, food? How you, exactly. Okay. And at the same time, they are interested to know about the situation, mm. the background. So it's kind of like a cultural communication in food and in uh, culture you know, and uh, political situation, everything. Was it difficult uh, getting chefs to open up their kitchens to refugees? At the beginning, we thought that it would be quite a challenge because the kitchen is the place where the restaurant makes his business and uh, there was those stereotypes around refugees. But in the end, when we started to meet the first restaurants, uh, it came out that quite easily restaurants were willing to participate, were willing to show some solidarity. And it's for them a very simple way to um, show um, some um, solidarity toward refugees by, you know, running their everyday business. So there's really easygoing neighborhood canteens who participate to the festival, but also three-star Michelin restaurants. So there's a huge diversity of venues since the beginning. I think that there has been almost 200 restaurants who took part to the project and always um, showcasing the talents and the culinary heritage of the, uh, the refugee chefs who are invited to cook in the restaurant. And it's also an opportunity to remind everyone that Syria, that Afghanistan, that Chechnya are not only countries who are at war, but also country with a history and many things to, uh, to bring to the hosting society, and especially when it comes to cooking. Because I think there's something that interests the, the restaurants who participate is also to get to learn about new, Indeed. Uh, new you know, cooking techniques. And ingredients. ingredients. It's, it's a uh, new way of working in the restaurants and, and most of the restaurants after the participation to the festival they keep you know some spices they keep some some dishes on their cards and the, and it's also a way for and for the restaurants to learn things and, and go further in their business so so what do you cook what's your specialty my mom's uh, so recipes cook, okay syrian food syrian food and yeah. what do you learn anything from you know you know f the french people you collaborate with of course of course here in france you know it's the capital of food mm. as i say so it's uh, the right place to learn the techniques the the basis of cooking because w what i learned uh, at home it was like the home cooking simple recipes but here i had the chance to develop my skills and learn the techniques and how to mix the syrian food and present it like in the french way for okay. the french people yeah now you must know this but you know living in france uh, the, the process for you know people asylum seekers to apply for for asylum is long they apply for asylum they have to wait you know a couple of maybe a year before they can work what do you think they could uh, your festival could do more in s sort of helping uh, migrants find jobs through food i think somehow the festival contributes to you know, uh, change the perspective, the way people look at refugees. And from a, one of our objectives is to create a citizen mobilization because we, we strongly believe that if, 
It's our duty as Europeans to create a, a more welcoming environment to refugees. We often forget that refugees are people who are not only leaving the country because they want to find a better life. It's not, it's not about this. It's because they are uh, flying away from war and persecutions. And, and we don't need to uh, wait for the answers of our governments uh, to, to create this more welcoming environment. We need to have the civil society get, get, getting mobilized, the civil society changing the, the way they they, 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 they perceive uh, the, the refugees coming. So I think that thanks to the festival, somehow we create to break stereotypes, try to have a, um, a more positive approach of refugees uh, in, in France, but also wider in Europe. And somehow, at some point, it might help in changing the way regulations work and the way uh, our, our politicians approach uh, the arrival of refugees and maybe uh, f uh, facilitate uh, the, um, the, the process to get the status. And what about you? So how long did it take for you, you know, after you arrived in France to get the necessary paperwork to, to start working? Oh, it took almost like one year and a half. Yeah. And uh, of course, there is also the language barrier because yeah. I came, I didn't speak any French, so I had to learn from zero. And uh, I felt like after learning the language, after finishing the papers, that you know, like the, you feel different. You feel like you are kind of like integrated into society, or starting to integrate and start to think about like what I'm gonna do in my life, how I'm gonna like rebuild my life again. Uh, and where are you working now? Are you working in a restaurant? Actually, I worked for one year in a restaurant called La Regalade. Okay. And now I'm gonna work with Refugee Food Festival starting from next month in the restaurant at Ground Control. Okay. As chef en résidence. Perfect, great. And I just want to ask you, this food festival, because right now it's in Paris and a couple of cities in France and Europe, but you're expanding. Yes, it has expanded. Uh, in, uh, in seven cities in France, so Lyon, Marseille, Bordeaux, Strasbourg, and etc. But also in big capitals in Europe, Geneva, Brussels, Madrid, uh, uh, Bologna, and maybe I'm forgetting one of them. And uh, overseas in the US, New York, and Cape Town uh, in South Africa. There's also some new activities that we've been developing. We've opened a restaurant in Paris in the uh, 12th district, which is dedicated to refugee chefs who want to open the restaurant. So basically, uh, they can get the control of the restaurant for a period of six months, like Aitham. He will start as of uh, beginning of July. And on this day, in this restaurant, they work on their card. Uh, they develop their network of suppliers. They get used to how, what does it take to run a restaurant in France? Run a business, France, exactly. run a business in exactly. France. And then the objective is to open your own business. So, yeah. so it's, been... it's not just the food. It's just <laughs> the food. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, good luck with that. Thank and you thank much. you very much for joining us thank on the program much. today. Thank you so much.